Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have a brand new set of great stories for you to enjoy. Subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Sit comfortably. Here we go. To Catch a Pen Thief So I work in an aerospace facility that's large enough that you'll never meet everyone who works there. It's the type of place where everything you could need, pens included, are provided to you. However, as free pens go, you already know they're the crappy ones. I'll just buy my own pens, thanks. Around the time of this incident, I'd just taken a promotion. Part of the deal was I'd be working second shift instead of first. Okay by me. As I'm getting used to my new schedule, I started losing my pens. Not abnormal for me, but it was happening too often that I'd come in to work and I swear I put my pen right here last night, but now I can't find it. I grew suspicious of my now previous co-workers who knew where I usually stash things, and I hatched a plan. First, I had to make sure my pen was indeed being taken rather than me losing my mind due to my new schedule. I bought a pack of Pilot G2s, duh, best pens out there, and laid a trap. Now I work in the machine shop, and there are toolboxes everywhere. I set up and run multiple machines, but there's a particular machine that everybody knows is kind of my home base. In that accompanying toolbox, I left a pen in the top drawer, right front and center, for a pen de jeu to find, and sure enough, it was gone the next day. I'm not crazy, and the hunt has begun. In my line of work, we have controlled documents. Every piece and part is documented and serialized. One of our huge taboos is using any color other than black on these documents. It was obvious what I had to do. When I bought my last pack of G2s to avoid having to use the craptacular provided pens, I also bought a set of colored G2s. I took the ink cartridge from a pink pen and used a black sharpie to hide both the ink in the tube and the colored cap on the top of the cartridge. Looked a bit ugly, but I knew I wasn't dealing with a pro here. I placed the pink, now black, cartridge in an unsuspecting black pen body and left it in my usual hiding spot. The next day, when I came into work, sure enough, the pen was gone, my trap had worked. First thing I heard in my shift pass-down meeting was how some dumb butt used pink ink on a work order this morning, and I'd better make sure for the millionth time that my new employees knew better than to do something that dumb. Didn't even have to fess up to setting a trap. Nailed that fool right to the wall, and no one knows what I did. Suck it, Benjamin. And our next story. So I'm not required to be on call? Cool, I'll be back in an hour. A bit of backstory. I worked as a relatively young new manager of a small business. There were about four managers who all reported to the owner. We had about 20 staff members and I regularly was in charge of five to six staff members at a time. My shift was due to run for nine hours on this day and the employee handbook as well as the national award stated that this shift required a one hour lunch break. There's also a specific subsection where it stipulates that if you're required to remain on call during your lunch break, then you would be paid for the entire hour. When I approached the owner about this, I was told that I could just eat some sandwiches in the staff room, cramped dark storage room, and just go help out if anyone needed me. I argued that this would mean that I was on call and therefore should be paid for the break. He was having none of it and claimed that if I needed to nip out to buy some lunch, then of course that would be fine as I wasn't on call. Here's where the MC comes in. If I'm not on call during my break, then I sure as hell wasn't going to hang out in a storage closet for an hour, so I made sure that on the day of the MC, I had some of my senior staff members working with me. I explained that I needed to leave the store for an hour for a lunch break, and I picked a nice, quiet day. I made sure the staff had my personal cell phone number in case something went wrong, I was only five minutes down the road and made sure I could be there if urgent. But for this to work, I had to be off camera and away from the center for the full hour. I then proceeded to head down to the local lunch bar, read the paper, and just enjoyed the peace and quiet for exactly the amount of time that I had for my break. I ran my watch timer as I left the store to ensure complete compliance of the one hour break. It took three shifts for the owner to realize I was doing this, and when he did find out, all hell broke loose. I was told something along the lines of, what if something had happened? The junior staff don't have the experience to deal with major situations. 
What if someone held us up at gunpoint while you were away? Every situation he brought up highlighted the fact that I needed to be there at all times, to which I calmly responded that I was on break. I then repeated his claim that I was not on call and could leave the store to go get lunch if I wanted to. He started to realize what was happening and asked me not to do it again until he had a chat with the relevant people. The next week, he had a meeting with me explaining that it was wrong for him to ask me to stay in the center on call without pay and that from now on, all managers will be paid for their breaks. It's been four years now and managers have come and gone, but all of them have been paid for their breaks. I feel like I made a positive change for the employees and I'm proud that I made the effort to show him that we needed to be on call. And our last story. Dismissive? I'm not going to beg you to give me work to do. This was a lot of years ago when I was a teenager. I'd just gotten a job at a huge retail chain. From the start, it was a crap show. Paperwork had to be redone. Nobody knew correct starting dates, etc. They eventually had me do orientation, then told me just to come in on Monday and ask for a manager. Okay, I put on my stupid little vest and go to work. I clock in. I walk up to the first manager I see, say I'm new, and ask where I should go. She's busy talking to a friend and says she'll find out where I'm supposed to be. So I stand there. She walks off and I figure she's going to the office to check on things. I stand there for two hours. I finally see her walking by again, so I step forward and open my mouth to speak. But before I can get a word out, she says, Not now! And briskly walks by me. Okay. I stand there for another hour. I don't care, I'm on the clock. I eventually see her pulling a large cart full of items, no clue what she was actually up to, so again I ask her what I should do. She snaps her head my way, gives me a super angry stare, and quickly says, Look, you're not a kid. Find something to do. Then continues on her merry way. Mind you, even as a teenager, I wasn't the type to be talked down to for no good reason. I shrug and make my way out to the parking lot to head to my car, because I was already done with that job. But as I stepped out of the double doors and into the boiling summer heat, it dawned on me that I had a unique opportunity here. I already didn't want the job any longer, and I was told to find something to do, though I had no clue where anything was or what things actually needed to be done, so I went back into the air-conditioned megastore and started pacing the aisles. For the rest of my shift, I walked through every single aisle and made a very detailed shopping list of things I'd need for my first apartment. I finished my shift and clocked out. The next morning, I clocked in, shrugged, and started pacing again. This time, I made a huge list of foods to try and copied down lots of recipes from boxes. I also made a wish list of cool stuff from the toys and electronics section, lava lamps, black lights, etc. Halfway through the shift, the angry manager lady from the day before sees me purchase a candy bar, then marches up to me to ask if I'd clocked out for my lunch break. I had no idea I even got a lunch break, and I was going to remind her that I still had no idea what I was supposed to be doing, but the conversation only went like, no, but I, no, 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 there are no buts. I understand, but I, no buts. And she simply turns her back on me and walks away. Fine. So if I ever actually take a lunch, I'll be sure to clock out. I go back to pacing. The next day, I've already seen every aisle several times. I now have lists for gift ideas for friends and family. I have lists for movies and video games I want. I even have lists for crap to buy if I ever get into having fish as pets. I decide to see what's actually in the back rooms, as I've only seen the first one for orientation. Okay, mostly storage, a cool trash compactor, and a break room? With piles of candy on the tables? Turns out, sometimes crap like candy comes partially opened or customers open the bags and the company would simply inventory it as damaged and usually throw it away. But some of the cooler managers would inventory it as damaged, then toss it into the break room for whoever. Sweet. So I'm watching TV and eating free damaged candy, but it's not cable TV and I hate daytime TV, so I only watch it for a few hours before I punch out and go home. The next week consists of me playing through almost all of the demo games on the demo PlayStation. Showing my age here. Now I'm just very bored. I spend my days walking around the store and eating damaged candy. I stop to bullcrap with customers who have cool shirts or tattoos. If someone asks me where to find something, I try to find it with them. It's over a month in. I start counting my steps. 
thousands of steps a day. It's canceling out the calories of all the damaged candy I'm still eating. I'm getting tired of candy. Two months in, I start following people around to see how long it takes them to notice and to see if they'll say anything. They always notice, and nobody is comfortable enough to say anything. Jesus, I think. Is this serial killer crap? Is this how people become serial killers? I go back to pacing the aisles. I just hear the squeaking of cartwheels and the tap, tap, tap of my shoes on the polished floors. The fluorescent lighting doesn't feel so friendly any longer. Now it feels invasive. Pacing. Pacing. I don't think people are supposed to feel this weird, this disconnected. But I also don't think people should walk around indoors for eight hours a day while eating damaged candy the entire time. Why am I even having this conversation with myself? I suddenly feel surreal and realize that there's no way that any of this is normal. So without hesitation, I clock out and never return to work. I got my final paycheck, as the rest of them, but nobody even called to see why I was missing my shifts. Was I even on a schedule? I have no idea. I found another job that actually required me to work, but that was okay. The time at that large store was just one surreal blur after the second week, but the manager told me to find stuff to do, and that's exactly what I did. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.